So welcome back to another rebuild here on NBA 2K24 Next Gen. In today's video, we are back with another episode of our offseason rebuild series, and today it's going to be the Indiana Pacers. This magical run that the Indiana Pacers have been on is now officially over. A few nights ago, they lost to the Boston Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals. They were swept, and I will say this, it was not a conventional sweep. There were a lot of competitive moments in games one, three, and four, and ultimately it was just inexperience that killed this Pacers team. So this is a very talented team. I'm going to give you more of my thoughts about all of these players in just a second, but my God, man, this Pacers offense especially is just... It's something to watch. So I know you can make the argument that yes, the Milwaukee Bucks were injured. Yes, the New York Knicks were injured in the two teams they beat up until the Eastern Conference Finals. But this team, I like this team a lot. I think this team can be back within the next two to three years. As I just mentioned, we're going to talk more about this Pacers team in just a second once we get into the video. But of course, before we do, as always, let me know any of the video ideas down below in the comment section. We have a very interesting period coming up because obviously we are still some time away from the NBA draft and free agency and all those fun things. Uh, but we only have three offseason rebuilds to go after this. We have the Minnesota Timberwolves, the Dallas Mavericks, and the Boston Celtics. And of course, we don't do teams until they are eliminated. And I'll let you know at the time I'm recording this, the, uh, the Minnesota Timberwolves are not eliminated yet. It's certainly possible that they will be very shortly. So very much looking forward to this one today man congrats to the Pacers and all their fans on a fantastic season let's get into it we're here in off season number one of course as always it's three off seasons three regular seasons when the end goal being winning a championship so let's go ahead and have a conversation about this Indiana Pacers team this group that just had a magical run all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals and no I'm not going to sit here and put a bunch of asterisks on it you're more than welcome to do that if you want I am not going to do that right now so starting out with the best player on this team Tyrese Halliburton all NBA third team this season has obviously struggled with some injuries kept him out of the final two games of this series and half of game number two but I think he's still the face of this franchise moving forward he is an absolutely incredible player obviously is a fantastic facilitator of the basketball probably never a guy that's going to be up there near 30-ish points a game but he can certainly give you something he's 24 years old a 91 overall he's my guy moving forward TJ McConnell let's just talk about dog this dude just didn't miss he just, like many other players on the team, he just didn't miss. I saw this guy in his kind of unorthodox jump shot from anywhere 15 feet or in. The dude just didn't miss. And he's six feet tall. He's shorter than I am. It is absolutely insane. This guy was hard-nosed, stepped up when they needed him to. I give a ton of credit because he is a fantastic backup point guard option for this team moving forward. Let's talk about Andrew Nemhart a little bit. 24 years old, only a 77 overall. I have some suspicions that for 2K25, that'll be just a bit higher. Uh, but I fully expect him to be the shooting guard for this team moving forward. Kind of filled in for Tyrese Halliburton in that starting five when he did end up going out. But ultimately, this guy... We're looking at possible star moving forward, right? I know a lot of people maybe made some of the Jalen Brunson-esque comparisons. You know, eventually goes to a new team, gets a bigger role, kind of breaks out even further. But I think Indiana is very much aware of what they have here with Andrew Nemhard. Such a fantastic series from this young man, and I fully expect him to be a franchise piece for this team moving forward. Ben Shepard was in the starting lineup. He was up and down. I know some of his shots weren't falling. He was like the only guy who actually didn't have his shots fall. But uh, if that overall continues to go up, he certainly could be a bench piece for me here in today's video. Ben Matherin has been out for a long time. He did not play at all in the playoffs. Uh, and he's somebody that I want to see how much further he can go in terms of development. He's only 22. He's an 81 overall. I have absolutely no plans of moving him or anything like that, at least where we are right now. Aaron Neesmith, the former Celtic, I thought was going to hit that game winner in game three. It did not fall. I love Aaron Neesmith. He is a hard-nosed defensive player. His offense is starting to kind of come together, and he's only 24, and he's on an absolutely beautiful contract. So uh, he is certainly going to be in the conversation for my sixth or seventh man in today's video. Doug McDermott saw some minutes eventually. He's just an absolute liability on defense. I know he can shoot the ball, but I don't really know what my plans are here today with Doug. Uh, and then Kendall Brown. All right, the power forward spot. Pascal Siakam is probably the biggest question the Indiana Pacers have going into this offseason. Not because he's bad or performed awful, but Pascal Siakam, they acquired him near the deadline in a trade with the Toronto Raptors. Uh, and now he's going to hit unrestricted free agency. So the conversation about what you want to pay Pascal Siakam, I don't really think it's going to be a long one. You have to pay him probably a max contract. I'm not saying this to try to be rude or disrespectful, but Indiana is not a marquee destination for free agents. Let's just call a spade a spade. It's not like probably 25 other different teams in the NBA. So you have to pay your guys. You went out and gave up some things at the deadline in order to get him. He's 30 years old. He's probably the second best player here. You got to pay him. Obi Toppin really didn't think I saw a lot of like great things out of him. I mean, I know he made some tough shots, but... I don't know. I was expecting a little more out of him. Then Jairus Walker, I don't think, saw the floor at all. I mean, maybe a few minutes. 
but I didn't really see much of him. Uh, and then the center spot, Miles Turner. Very, very interesting series out of him. There was a couple games that he just looked like he couldn't miss, like most of this team. Uh, and then just really didn't have a great closeout game in Game 4. I know he got in some foul trouble, a little bit of a scuffle with Jalen Brown. But Miles um, Turner is still a solid center. He's like one of the veteran guys on a ver pretty much very young Indiana group here. So I don't have any plans to trade him today. I like the contract quite a bit, and then he will hit free agency and will likely pay him. Jalen Smith, I'm not really sure. I know he got a few minutes in this series when there was some foul trouble, but uh, he, he is one overall higher than Isaiah Jackson, but I think I'd rather have Jackson if I'm being honest with you. So that's where we're at right now. That is this team. Again, I understand you can talk about the Milwaukee Bucks being injured. You can talk about the New York Knicks being injured. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you you're wrong. I'm just saying that this Indiana team showed me something in this conference finals. I understand they're swept. It is part of the process learning how to close out games. I can tell you from many, many years of experience the excruciating pain of watching my Celtics not being able to close out a game drove me over the fucking edge. This Indiana group, they will learn. They will figure it out. It is something all teams go through. Let's talk about Rick Carlisle a little bit. Overall, I think Rick Carlisle is a really good head coach. I think he had quite a few blunders in this series, most notably near the end of games. I think percentage-wise, game one, they were 97% to win the game at its peak. I think game three, they were about 94%. And then I think in game four, they peaked out at 90%. So uh, that's all in the fourth quarter, by the way. If you are 90 plus percent to win three different games and you go 0-3 in those games, that might be a little bit of a coaching issue. Now here today, he has some pretty good ratings, but ultimately I think Rick's got to rethink some of these things. With a young group like that, I thought at the end of game three, he really needed a timeout. I know they didn't want to let the Celtics get set, but you're going against fucking Drew Holiday. You're not, I mean, this isn't some scrub that you're trying to defend in the fast break. So that's my thoughts on that. I think Rick Carlisle has pretty much zero chance of getting fired this offseason, but I certainly think he could have made some better decisions uh, near the end of game. So we do not have our first round pick this year. We do have one second. The first round pick was sent to the Toronto Raptors in the Pascal Siakam trade. I'm not going to draft somebody in round number two. Um, I know some people like it when I do, but I've been drafting a lot of guys. It just it doesn't make sense for me here today. So Matherin, yes, picking up his two-year option. So Jalen Smith had a player option that he's declining. And then I'll bring back Kendall Brown. Obviously, this is not a realistic rebuild. So uh, Obi Toppin entering restricted free agency for about $10 million, 81 overall. I think that's very much worth it. We'll see what he asks for annually. Uh, and then here in free agency, Pascal Siakam is kind of the, the man of the hour right now. The real big question we have here, and I'm not going to make it a very long conversation. We're just going to pay him. Whatever the hell 2K says, I will. Uh, and then, so Jalen Smith. It's it's hard for me to argue letting, you know, a 24-year-old who's pushing 80 overall kind of walk out the door for nothing. I know he wasn't really in the rotation too much. But I just, I like Isaiah Jackson's upside. I really do. But I'm not going to let him leave for nothing is what I'm trying to say. Um, and then we don't have bird rights on Obi Toppin. He is somebody that I'm just going to wait on. I don't know if the game's actually just going to let me bring him back. It might, it might not. Uh, let me actually wait until after I get Siakam and Smith back, and then we'll go from there. So, oh, Obi Top, I'm going to go to the Lakers. I'm surprised they had the funds, but three years, about 43, 44 million bucks. Certainly okay with matching that. All right, that's where we're at right now. I honestly don't plan on making many major trades, right? I mean, this is a team that is young. They are kind of figuring out an identity, and I really think it would be wise to kind of just let things kind of take its course. So I know we have some serious depth, especially in the front court right now. Uh, Jairus Walker was just the eighth overall pick in 2023. I don't think it would be smart to let him kind of rot on the bench again. Uh, I know it's hard kind of finding him a spot here, but I honestly think there's a path where maybe I play play Neesmith at the backup two and then I play Toppin at the backup three and then let Walker get some run here behind Siakam I know it's going to hurt the overalls but if I'm thinking about ceiling I think both those guys are a little bit higher than 23 year old Ben Shepard so that's what I'm going to do there and then honestly maybe we call it like a little sign in trade here with Jalen Smith because I'm a believer in Isaiah Jackson I think he's a high energy guy I think he gives you a lot around the rim and so that's the guy I'm going to go with to back up Miles Turner there's nothing wrong with Jalen Smith but Unfortunately, with the way the NBA is today, everybody's just so talented, right? Somebody's going to fall out of the rotation. Uh, so I'm going to attempt, anyways, to get some sort of draft compensation here. I don't really need another player. All right, the Oklahoma City Thunder are willing to give me a draft pick. Maybe they're looking for a little bit more size. I'm sure they do have still, still have some rebounding issues. So they want to give me a 2026 and Lindy Waters the third. That's fine by me. It's not even the most crazy unrealistic trade. It's not fantastic, but you get it. Um, all right, here's what we're going to do. Neesmith, shooting guard. He goes down two. That sucks. And then Toppin actually goes up one at the small forward spot. Uh, I don't love it, but it's just kind of the reality of where we're at with what this team is. 
is and how they are built. So um, it's not like Neesmith can't shoot the three. I mean, he has an A three-point shot. So that's where we're at right now. Uh, Toppin will be coming off the bench. Matherin is going to be starting for me. I fully believe in Ben Matherin. Um, okay, so that's where we're at right now. Can I also maybe get some draft picks here? Well, what's the contract situation? So Shepard has some years. I'll let him chill on the bench. But Lindy Waters, who we just acquired, uh, doesn't really have much value to me. So thank you very much, Chicago. I will see you guys at the start of year number one. Did not have the craziest offseason by any means, but ultimately, I don't really think we had to. This is a team that has an identity right now. They are fast-paced. They are moving the basketball, and I really didn't want to screw with that too much. So this is a group that we brought back the majority of. We are ready to see what this team can do here in a time where there's not going to be any injuries. So time will tell how truly battle-tested this Indiana group is and where we're going to find ourselves in a relatively weaker Eastern Conference. So Halliburton's up to a 94 overall. You obviously love to see that. Nemhard, I know his over Overall is not going to shoot to the sky uh, like it possibly will maybe in 2K25 as we discussed a little bit earlier, but uh, I still believe in him. I really do. I, this kid showed me something throughout this series, and I, I am an Andrew Nemhard believer. I want to buy all the stock in his future development if it's possible. Good to have Ben Matherin back on this team. I'd like to see that overall shoot up a little bit eventually, but we are definitely going to have him in the starting five right now. We obviously paid Pascal Siakam, which I think was a little bit of a no-brainer, uh, and then Miles Turner, the longest tenured pacer, I would assume, with this group. Uh, is going to be our starting center. Obi Toppin will be the sixth man. Um, I know he is technically the highest overall. Is he the best player coming off the bench? I might lean McConnell a little bit right now. Maybe, maybe even Nee Smith, but that's just the way it's going to go here with 2K anyway. So he's playing 20, he's playing 18, he's playing 17. It's not the craziest difference. And then Isaiah Jackson getting 12, backing up Turner. And Jarris Walker, who is finally going to crack the rotation, is going to be our backup power forward playing 10 minutes a night. So that is the team. There is a lot of depth on this. I talk about this all the time, but there is a very big difference between depth and quality depth. Indiana, quality depth team. So I'm excited to see what this group can do. I will see you guys at the end of year number one. SGA wins his first MVP here at the end of our first regular season. But more importantly, we blew out the haters. We completely proved it wasn't a fluke run. We go 57 and 25. Now, I don't know where that shapes up here in the East, but I have a feeling it's a top two seed. Very excited about what we can do this postseason run. SGA, awesome numbers. So, Castle, not Castleton. Cam Thomas, your sixth man of the year. Wemby, Depoy, Men Thompson, most improved. Jokic, clutch player of the year. 61 wins for the Dallas Mavericks, who are probably on their way to the finals. They're probably already in there by the time you're seeing this video. Um, all right, let's check out the standings. Where do we fall? We're the one seed. We are the one seed here, and we really didn't even do anything. We didn't do, I mean, we did some things, but we didn't really make any major moves. For the most part, we just ran it back and made some small tweaks near the end of the bench. I'm pumped. I am so pumped about this team right now. When we didn't even have a single guy averaging 20 points a game. Beautiful team basketball. Beautiful. Here are the numbers all across the board. Good to see Matherin getting back in here. Miles Turner, top, and Nemhard. Again, it's... It's just where we're going to be with him. Uh, Neesmith, McConnell, Jackson, and then Walker. Rebounds per game was Mr. Siakam, and then assists, 10 and a half. Fucking beautiful. All right, man. We are heading into the playoffs. We are hoping to have a long run. We do have the New York Knicks. Very, very fun series. Obviously, no injuries in this one. And they have made some interesting franchise decisions because not only have they appeared to trade Mitchell Robinson, it looked like they let Isaiah Hartenstein walk right out the door, and they've pivoted to Precious Jua. Uh, there's nothing wrong with Precious. I would just take either Robinson or Hartenstein over him. So maybe we can expose them a little bit there around the rim. God knows the Pacers exposed the Celtics around the rim without KP. We are up 3-2 right now, and we win this series in six games. Now we're moving on. What? Uh, oh, not what I meant to do. We're moving on to run back the Eastern Conference Finals last year. We know damn well how good this Celtics team is. They have two stars. Man, I'm not getting into the superstar conversation. You know how good this team is. Can we get a little bit of revenge here? The one time I like the Celtics to lose is when I'm beating them here in 2K. We are up 3-1 right now, and we win in 5 we get it done in five games. And look at Mr. Joel Embiid getting out of the second round. They add Paul George like it's certainly a possibility in real life. I see some people talking about maybe bringing PG back to Indy. It's a tough conversation because then you have to let Siakam go. I'm almost positive at that point. So um, I would probably lean with Siakam. It's been working. I'm not getting into who's better between those two. But uh, I think Paul George the 76ers is really a possibility. So here goes nothing. Eastern Conference Finals time. Can we get to the finals here in our first season of this rebuild? We're up 3-1 and we're in. 
We are in the finals, our first season, and we have barely done a goddamn thing. It is us versus the Dallas Mavericks here. It was a possible matchup after the Western Conference and Eastern Conference finals were set, of course. Uh, it is all likelihood going to be Boston and Dallas. I'm sorry, I know I keep mentioning it. It probably already is. All right, here is a look at this team. They have made some changes. No more P.J. Washington. Interesting. Um, can we get this done in year one? I mean, that would be absolutely insane. Oh, we go down. Okay. <laughs> Insane series out of Kyrie. I mean, a lot of people are saying, hey, Kyrie is one of the best Robins to Batmans in, you know, league history. But uh, he is showing today why he can still be a Batman when called upon. So I don't know. Like, I've seen Dallas win a lot of finals here in 2K. And I would say pretty much every time, like, right, I'd say like 99.9% .9 of the time, I think Luka wins finals MVP. Good job, Kyrie Irving. That's insane. All right, offseason number two. A fantastic first season. Very disappointing. Uh, we obviously couldn't get it done, but this was a fucking awesome step in the right direction, and I am absolutely pumped about what this team can do next year. So here in the draft lottery, I don't think we've actually, or at least anybody in Indiana has traded for any lottery picks, and uh, they have not. So we're not going to have a lottery pick. That's fine by me. I'm still very happy with the job Rick Carlisle has done because you got to also consider the fact that if Rick Carlisle goes... You know, it's not going to completely change the way they play, but that's Rick Carlisle's system right there, right? Like, there's no... Like, he... I understand... Let me let me make this clear. I'm not saying he's the sole reason the Pacers are so good offensively, but they were not nearly as good like this before he came and joined this team. Capiche? I think we all got it. All right. On to the draft. We have the 28th overall pick in round one and two. I'm going to pass on the second round pick once again. I know some people don't like it. And then I will draft somebody here. I'm not sure if they're actually going to crack the rotation just because of the team we have right here. Uh, but, ooh, Nolan Traore. Traore, uh, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and tell you I know a lot about him, but he certainly is ranked pretty highly. And TJ McConnell's getting up there in age. So, you know what, Mr. Traore? Nolan, come on down to town, buddies. A 72 overall. It's not fantastic. Brown will be gone, brought back as well just to kind of rot on the bench. Isaiah Jackson entering restricted free agency. Uh, and then I know we're not going to have any real money to spend, so let's just go get our guys. Turner actually does have an offer. Not a real offer. Okay, so we're going to pay him. How much McConnell asking for? Not a ton. This, and I'm not going to lie to you, might be the final season that TJ McConnell gets minutes. Uh, that's not me saying I don't want to keep him. That's just 2K on their regression bullshit as unfair as it is tj mcconnell is unfortunately one of those guys that gets hit pretty hard with it so i still think it would be beneficial to make a trade i'm not saying we're going to make some sort of blockbuster deal but i'm also not completely ruling it out i would like to find a way to add anthony simons to this team now i'm not exactly sure how well the fit is going to be but ultimately I think he'd be a step in the right direction now i know i just talked up nem hard a ton and if this was you know Maybe a year from now, there's no chance I'm trading him, but that's just the way 2K has his player arc kind of built. He's never going to give you what you think he probably will in the future. It's unfortunate. It's just the reality of how 2K works. So I'd like to have Nemhard come off the bench in a different role. Add Anthony Simons, a guy who can certainly give us 20-plus points a game, even though he might not get that here. Uh, he is certainly within reach. So Obi Toppin, Ben Shepard are the two players I am offering at the moment. I think Toppin is very important to this team, but in all honesty, I would like to move Neesmith back to the backup three. Uh, and then in terms of ceiling, I am banking on the fact that I think Jairus Walker has a little bit more potential than Obi Toppin. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm going to try to talk to the Trailblazers and see if they're maybe willing. I mean, I have some other players. Like, if you want Kendall Brown, and then do I have anybody else? Not really. So I'm going to try to hang on to Nolan Traore because I do think there is a, a positive possibility with him on this team. So how about our first? That's not. I can't give that up. Our first in 28, and they agree. All right, that's a fantastic deal right there. It's going to allow me to move Neesmith back to the small forward spot, and I think that benefits probably everybody a little bit. So excited about that. Now let's see any other things we have to do with this team. I don't really think so. I really don't. I'm just going to let it go. I mean, we were that close last year. We are, right? This was a team that made the finals. I'm not saying that Anthony Simons, with all due respect, is some superstar game changing player that's going to put us over the top. But again, we're making moves. We're not giving up a ton while still keeping a lot of future assets in play. So I'm excited about what this team can be. I'll see you guys at the start of year two. After a somewhat disappointing end to what was overall a really positive season, we decided to make a relatively large move, adding Anthony Simons to this team. So he joins new backcourt mate here, Tigers Halliburton, and they are hopefully going to tear up the rest of the NBA. So very excited about this team. I think we are very, very close to a championship. 
hopefully we go out and prove that. So as I just talked about, Halley and Simons now our new backcourt. Mathurin here, good to see that overall going up a little bit. Obviously, Siakam and Turner locking down the front court. The bench unit is still very, very elite. I know we lost our six-man last year in Obi Toppin, but I think we made out just fine. It is Andrew Demhard now taking over the six-man responsibilities. You got Aaron Neesmith moving back to his natural position of small forward. Isaiah Jackson, good to see that overall going up as my backup center. Jarris Walker up to a 79 overall as well. My backup power forward, and then TJ McConnell. We knew some of the regression was going to come in, and of course, our superstar is a 94 overall point guard. We don't need as many backup point guard minutes, but I still think McConnell is a great option as a spark plug point guard off the bench. Uh, and then Mr. Treore, who we obviously drafted late in the first round, uh, is going to be sent down to the G League. It's not going to do anything crazy to his overall, but I think makes the most sense for me. So I will see you guys at the end of year number two. Another jump in the right direction as 61-21 and 21 is how we wrap up year number two. It is another MVP for SGA. The only thing I'd like to change this year is the actual NBA champion. DJ Wagner, your rookie of the year. He's a rookie? Damn. Uh, Reza Shea is your sixth man of the year. Buddy's out in fucking D.C. Why is he not starting? Wemby's your deep boy. Shaden Sharp, most improved ant. Clutch player of the year. Mark Dagnalt, head coach of the Thunder who we very may well see in the finals, is your coach of the year. So he did have the second best record in all of basketball. It would have been nice to be one, but I'll live with it. I will 1,000% live with it. Tyrese Halliburton, Ben Matherin, Siakam, Turner, Simons. Wow, I thought Simons would be a little bit higher than this, like almost around like 21. I thought he'd be like 18, but no, 15. Nemar, Jackson, Walker, Neesmith, and McConnell. Rebounds per game with Siakam and then assists Halliburton at 11 and a half. God damn. All right, round one, us and the Detroit Pistons, Nicola Toppets, Jaden Ivey, Zar Thompson, Scotty Barnes, nice addition. You got Alperen Shengun there as well. I'm not sure how they made that front court possible, but it is a very talented one at that. We are up 2-1 right now. We go up 3-1. We close them out in five. Moving on to the Bucks. I'm sure the Bucks might be looking for a little bit of a... Uh have a comeback, if you will, a little bit of revenge, uh, as they obviously were beaten by this team, and uh, you can get into the injury conversation if you want. I'm not going to touch it. Uh, I don't like this front court. I understand Giannis's three-point shot has certainly come a long way in his years in the league, but next to Andre Drummond, it's not going to work. All right, here goes nothing in the Eastern Conference semifinals. Quick 2-0 lead for us. Quick 3-0 lead for... We sweep them. We sweep them out of their own building, and is now us in 2K's Favorite team, the Cleveland Cavaliers here, who always had Nikola Vucevic. It makes absolutely no sense. You already have two centers here in your starting lineup. Why do you need a third one off the bench? That's neither here nor there. We are quickly up 1-0. Make it 2-0. Make it 3-0. And we are just running through teams. And as I kind of thought and as I kind of expected, it is us in the Oklahoma City Thunder. Who is anybody surprised? OG OB, somebody who just always ends up in Oklahoma City. The funny thing would be, it's not completely out of the question that this is a possibility this offseason, right? I don't think a 3 and D guy like OG OB would be something that Oklahoma City would not be interested in. Uh, the one thing you kind of have to consider is, are they maybe waiting for the next superstar to request a trade out? And certainly they would be the team with a lot of assets and money to make that happen. So we quickly go down 2-0. We do fight back, win game 3 Lose game four. Okay, we're not dead yet. We are not dead yet as we head back here to Indiana on our home floor in what is obviously a must-win game six. A very high-scoring contest as we enter the fourth quarter in an absolute battle. We get it done. We get it done. We force game seven, and we are heading back to OKC. Can we pull off a crazy comeback after being down 3-1? This is a back-and-forth ball game. I am getting nervous. We have a full book. I'll see you guys in there. 244 left. 244 left. We are on the verge of a 3-1 comeback. We have a three-point lead in this ball game right now, and we have possession, which, of course, is fantastic. Oh, my God. Tyrese, just go right up to the... Foul? Foul. Was he not hit? Did I not see some contact there? What? Did... We got to open the eyes here, right? We got to open the eyes. We got to figure something out here. All right. Josh Giddy is not going to cook me. There's just absolutely no way. Jalen Williams might. He is uh, very good. But let's just hang on here. They're going to call a screen. Switch. We got to switch. That's actually a decent recovery, but god damn it. I'm not playing on ball defense. You can call me a bitch. You can call me whatever you want. I'm not going to do it. It never goes well. I don't care who I am attempting to guard. Turner, give me a screen. Give me a screen. Give me a screen. Let's go left. Down inside to Turner. Going to get the easy layup over Mr. Case and Wallace. Turner got 24 on the night. How about a few more boards, big man? But I'll live with it. I will live with it. Okay, nope. We got to pick him up with Turner. I know I just said no on-ball defense, but I had to recover. All right, now get off. Now get off. Let's just see. They're going to put Shed Holmgren. 
kind of just run into the rim. They're going to kick it back out here. And let's just fight. Let's fight. They're going to call the screen. I'm going to have to probably pick up Wallace. Switch. Thank you. Good. That's what I was looking for. Was that just... Fuck you. Oh, come on, you bitch. All right. Two point. Two point ball game. We're going to call for the ISO. Get out of my way. And then I want to go for a, a dagger. I want to go for the little bit of a floppy. Let's see what we got. Give me a good three-point shooter coming off this, please. Is it going to be Ben Matherin? It is going to be Ben Matherin. Matherin, not a three-point shot. It's a mid-range, and he puts it in. Oh, my God. Extending it to a four-point game once again, and I need a good defensive possession right now. I'm going to hang with Matherin here over in the corner on Lou Dort. Cookies. Oh, my God. Miles fucking Turner. Biggest steal of his career. Now we're going to waste the clock, but we're going to waste it with purpose. Get out of my way. I know Cason Wallace is a good defensive guard, and I'm going to call for a screen right now from Mr. Siakam. He's going to come on the right side here. Tyrese's strong hand right to the basket and gets the layup. Oh my God. Oh my God. That is what I am talking about. That's exactly what I've been looking for this entire game. And we finally are able to take advantage. I'm keeping the starters in. Eh, well, you know what? Actually, I'm going to throw an MR in here. A little bit more size. I know it's only about an inch or two. I trust his defense just a bit more than I trust Anthony Simons. Because obviously, we're looking more defense right now with a six-point lead. So let's try to deny. Oh, they don't even want to go. Where is SGA, by the way? Did he foul out? Because that would be tremendously unfortunate. I see him on the bench over there. That is just tremendously unfortunate timing for them right now. Their best player, their two-time MVP now, fouls out. Ow! He missed. He missed. They're going to not... Tech! Hello! You can what are we doing? What are we doing? I mean, what the hell is that? That's insane. All right, Siakam going to the stripe. We need a couple big ones here. Pascal, first one up and not... Uh, okay. Not what I was looking for. Not what I was looking for. I'm assuming Oklahoma City is going to take another timeout. I think it's a safe bet that if we hit this free throw, this game's over. It's probably over anyways. And up and good. I think this one's done. We overcome the impossible odds that have only been done one other time in NBA history. And we beat the Oklahoma City Thunder as Tyrese Halliburton taking home Mr. Finals MVP. All right, as we head into our final offseason, I don't plan on really making any moves. Um, I know that might be kind of the boring approach with it. Maybe I'll replace TJ McConnell, but uh, other than that, there's no re... Oh my God, that's a swap though. We don't have that, right? Oh, we do. It's at number six. I mean, it fell, which sucks, but I can certainly use that. Carlisle, obviously good. Um, wow, we got lucky. What deal was that from? Was that... Oh, you know what that was from? That was from the original Jalen Smith trade with the Oklahoma City Thunder. So you know what? Instead of kind of just trying to force something that doesn't really need to be done in terms of adding a superstar, because we actually have a lot of free agents, um, I would like to maybe replace my backup point guard. We talked about McConnell and his regression. Only going to hit harder next year. Let's see if we can go find a different point guard uh, to maybe upgrade and trade for. This is probably going to be considered the overpay of the century, and if it was any other offseason but number three, I'm never doing it in a million years. But we're looking for an upgrade. Uh, Traore has to be in here to make the money work. And Lonzo Ball, let's see if we can get Lonzo a ring. I don't really know. So I understand we just vastly gave up way too much value, but I wasn't making any other changes, so who the hell really cares? Um, I also haven't... Wait, was that 11? Oh, it's in round two. Okay. I was like, hang on a damn minute. Do I have the 11th overall pick as well? I do not. Um, not a lot in terms of the draft in today's video, but when you have a team like this that's built this way with so much young talent and so much promise already, why would I make moves that aren't necessary to add to this team that is already just so goddamn good? So we're going to bring back our three guys here with Mathurin, Nemhard, and Simons. And uh, I believe that should kind of be it in terms of any other moves with this team, right? We got our 10-man rotation. Yes, we do. After a 61-win season in which we overcame a 3-1 deficit in the NBA Finals to win our first championship of this video, we are back here for year three in what is hopefully going to be a second straight championship. Now, in terms of this starting five, there are no changes. We have a new backup point guard in Lonzo Ball, but this team, it's chemistry at an all-time high. It is Tyrese Halliburton, Anthony Simons, Benedict Matherin, Pascal Siakam, and Miles Turner to the bench unit. Andrew Nemhart, I'm keeping him as a six-man. I am. Maybe I could go Lonzo. Maybe I could go Jarris Walker, but nope, I'm hard. Lonzo Ball, Jarris Walker, Aaron e. Smith, and then Isaiah Jackson. So that is the team. Again, there's just so much quality depth here that uh, somebody's not getting as many minutes as they deserve, and that's pretty much everybody on the bench, quite honestly. So unfortunate situation, but that is the, uh, the reality of the world we live in right now. So I will see you guys at the end of the final regular season.
In a picture-perfect way to cap off our final regular season with 70 wins. 70-12 and 12 is the final regular season record, as we hope to win another championship. Nikola Jokic, what would that be? Four career MVPs. Elsie Harrington, your Rookie of the Year. Kaminga, now in Milwaukee. I'm just, is he backing up Giannis? I mean, come find a way to get the guy into the starting lineup. He's too damn good. Wemby and other deep boy, it's just it's every time, every season. Hugo Gonzalez, most improved. Luka Doncic, Clutch Player of the Year. And Rick Carlisle does win Coach of the Year, his first one of this video. So very, very excited for what is hopefully going to be another very long and very successful postseason run. So let's dive into some numbers real quick. See how everybody played. Hallie and Matherin at 20 points a game. I'll take it. I'm sure you guys know me pretty damn well by now, but I don't really care who does what as long as we're winning games. It is us in the Milwaukee Bucks. Speak of the devil. Damian Lillard's down to an 82 overall. That is a uh, a sad sight to see. We can sweep this team. We swept him last year, didn't we? Okay. Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, they have lost Darius Garland. They have... Oh, no, they did not lose Jared Allen. They just have Walker Kessler in front of them. Okay, that's interesting. I think this team is very beatable now. It might be a little bit of a bigger challenge than what we saw in round one, and maybe I just lied my ass off. Us and the Atlanta Hawks here. They, what? So Trey Young's not here, but Jabari Smith Jr. is. Okay, well, thanks for coming. It is us and the Dallas Mavericks here, 20, 10, and 10. Anybody else, that's a career series. Luca, you're like, what the hell happened, right? <laughs> that's insane. Us and Dallas, the rest of the team, they still have an insane backcourt. Uh, Jake LaRavia now here is their starting power forward. Yeah, I mean, they're they're good. I, they obviously beat us year one. I, I think we're the better team. They obviously have the best player, but... Okay, don't do this. Are we going to get a little taste of our own medicine after we came back from being down 3-1 last year? We're not going to blow a 3-1 lead, right? Please hold this. Do not let them go on an insane run. We're good. That is back-to-back -back championships to end this video, and it is two finals MVPs for our superstar point guard, Tyrese Halliburton. So... What a video. Just absolutely insane. Of course, there were some moves in this video. There wasn't a lot of blockbusters because there didn't need to be a lot of blockbusters. That's just the future and kind of how these go uh, when you have teams with really good young cores like the Pacers did. And honestly, myself included, I'm a culprit of this. I never talked about this Indiana team as one of the most promising young cores in all of basketball uh, like we do with the Oklahoma City Thunder and like we do with so many of these other teams. So uh, it's not a knock against them. It's just the reality. And uh I don't know. I think they had a fantastic season. Obviously, Eastern Conference Finals is always great. And the unfortunate reality of basketball is that only one team wins every year. And every other way out feels like it's a disappointment. So I doubt Indiana fans are hanging their heads. Sure, you can get an argument that they only were there because of injuries. But this is a really good team. This is a young team. And this is a team that is going to be here. It'll be a very big pain in the ass for a long time. So I expect big things in the future out of Tyrese Halliburton, this entire group. I am excited to see how they approach this offseason. And once again, congratulations to the Pacers and all their fans on a very, very fun Eastern Conference final. So that's it for me. As always, let me know any other video ideas down below in the comment section. Uh, and uh, I fucked up the outro. How did I do that? As always, thanks so much for watching. I love you guys. I'll catch you guys all in the next one.